Hi y'all, welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I am going to show you what is in our morning basket. So stay tuned. Okay, well, if you are new, welcome. Welcome to my channel, Pursuing Peace. My name is Dina, and I am a homeschooling mama of five kiddos, seven and under. And on this channel, I share my passions for Christ, for homeschooling, and for encouraging mamas in their faith and in this amazing, even though it's a little bit crazy, it's still an amazing season of motherhood. And so if you'd like to join me on this journey, then click the subscribe button down below, and don't forget to click the little bell icon right next to it so that way you know whenever new videos pop up. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Dina underscore pursuing peace if you'd like to get an inside glimpse on what goes on around here in this crazy house. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, if you have been in the homeschooling world at all, then you have probably heard the term morning basket. And the idea behind morning basket is that you can get a lot of things done um, in a fairly short amount of time. Whether you do, you loop your subjects in your morning basket or you do weekly subjects in a morning basket, um, we tend to do our history and our science in our morning basket along with classical conversations. And I have a video about classical conversations. I have a whole playlist about CC um, and I'll leave that link down below if you'd like to know a little bit more about that and how we do history and science and art and geography. <laughs> so a lot of things. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you, oh gosh, it's heavier than I think. It always is heavier than I think. Uh, but I'm gonna show you exactly what is in our morning basket and um, explain a kind of how we use it. If you'd like for me to do kind of a do a morning basket time with us the um, video then let me know down in the comments below but before we get into all of that I'm excited because this video is a collab with Chrissy over at a little glam a lot of mom. Chrissy is a mom of five just like me her kids are a little bit more spread out than mine she's got a couple of teenagers and then some little ones also so if you've got kids Kids within that age range then definitely go check her out they're also a military family which we're a military family also um, so it's always fun to meet military families around the world really her videos are calming and fun to watch and I love her aesthetic her style just brings me back to nature which I really really um, appreciate about her and I love that she enjoys good books with her family so you guys I'm gonna leave her channel linked down below so after you finish this video don't forget to go check out Chrissy's video as well. So thank you Chrissy for doing this collab with me and I'd also really like to thank the Land of Storybooks for um, sponsoring today's video. Um, something that I have been wanting to do with our homeschool this year, one of my big goals was to kind of saturate our school with good books. Um, I realized how much my kids were enjoying and learning from just sitting and reading picture books or living books um, or read alouds. And so I really, really wanted to bring a lot of that in to our homeschool this year. And one of the ways that I'm doing that is by the Land of Storybooks. The Land of Storybooks is a subscription box. It's it's one of a kind. It's the first like read aloud subscription box. There are subscription boxes that have like picture books and then they go along, you know, different activities go along with those picture books. But this one has a read aloud. So for instance, in October, their read aloud book was The Green Ember. And they had so many neat activities to go along with it. I was really excited, but I think my my oldest, Abby, was the one that was super excited about it. She really got into it. She wanted to do all the activities. She showed her siblings how to do the, the different activities and how to make these stained glass windows and how to make these peg doll bunnies. And it was just, it was so neat to watch her just kind of blossom in that. And now we have read The Green Ember before. It was one of our read-alouds over the summer, but she took that book and she just devoured it. She wanted to read it again and we didn't actually have the book before. We did it as an audio book during lunch um, and they loved it um, but she just sat there and wanted to read it because 
we had gotten it in this subscription box. So I was so excited when she just picked it up and started reading it. And I was surprised that she could even read at that level. And so, <laughs> and so I love it that this box has kind of pushed her into reading um, probably a little bit higher level than she normally would um, you know, pick up and read. Now, if you want to do a subscription with the Land of Storybooks, then their October deadline is, is over. So if you were to sign up for their subscription, the first box you would get is November. But if you like the Green Ember and you would still like that box, you can still get it as a single box. They do have a few left. So I will leave their link down in the description box below. If you do purchase the Green Ember, box then you will get that one in right away because that's october's box and they have already sent those out but they do have a few left over so if you want to grab one of those then you can just purchase that as a single purchase and it will come to you right away if you do sign up for a subscription the first box will be in november and i would i would highly suggest going to their instagram page i will leave that link down below and um checking out more information and going to their website and doing all of that again i will leave all of that information down below so you can go and check them out. You will not regret it. This is one of my favorite subscription subscription boxes, you guys. I love subscription. Ugh, I apparently can't say it, but I love <laughs> subscription boxes because it comes to me already packaged up. I don't have to run to the store. And running to the store with five little ones under seven can be a little bit daunting, you know? <laughs> you don't just run to the store, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so having it all come to my doorstep, book and everything, like, I just love it. Those are my favorite things. So subscription boxes are my jam. You probably know that since I have shown a few of them in um, my videos before, but this one, you guys, is a special one to me because like I said before, I want to saturate our homeschool with good books and this is just a perfect way to do that so i'm so excited to share that with you guys so thank you again land of storybooks for sponsoring this video all right you guys without any further ado i'm gonna just kind of go ahead and share with you what is in my basket and now we do call our morning basket time symposium time so you've probably heard me say that before in some of my other videos and you guys you don't have to call it morning basket you don't have to call it symposium you can call it whatever you want i it really doesn't matter the idea is it's a time where you all get together as a family and you can basically do whatever you want if you only want to do read alouds you can do that if you want to do your bible time during that time you can do that if you're a part of cc and that's when you do your memory work you can do that it doesn't have to be a set it's basically a time that you set aside to get to all the things that you normally wouldn't have time to get to if that makes sense so it has been a really really great time for us and we have really enjoyed it and learned a lot through it so first off this basket I do have my morning basket stuff in a basket but you don't have to have it in a basket you could have it on a pile in the you know wherever you have your morning basket time you can have it in a tub i used to have it in a big you know like tub that would fit into those cubbies you can store it however you want um it doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't have to be anything you know just doing it is more important than making it look good so <laughs> But I did get my basket from TJ Maxx. I wasn't necessarily planning on getting a basket, but it was there and it looked like it would be perfect. It has this nice little handle here where I can just carry it. Um, and it sits really nicely on our shelf in the schoolroom. And if you saw my huge homeschool haul part one, you saw where I showed you guys this basket where, when I got it from, T and all the other things that I got from TJ Maxx. But okay, so let me go ahead and share with you what is in our basket. So the very first thing that we do during our symposium time is um, a hymn study and it's not really a hymn study as much as it's just introducing hymns to my children by singing them like that's really all we do we sing them and they see words in there that they're like what does that mean 
<laughs> and then we start to have discussions about them. Um, so the first hymn that we did for a few weeks was How Firm a Foundation. And you guys, I had never even heard that hymn, but it's so beautiful and it was such a beautiful time to just sit. We do prayer first and then we do our hymn and we're just all singing. And what I do for the hymns is I just make copies. So here's the song that we're doing now. And then I pass them out. There's a few copies in here. I pass them out. Um, my my kindergartner, Aubrey, can't read quite yet, but she can follow along. So I actually um, have her come sit next to me and we just follow along in the hymn here. And it's just, it is a sweet time. It's a sweet time. The hymn that we're doing now is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I just love having this time where we can just listen to hymns really because my kids don't know we go to a non-denominational church and um, we don't sing a lot of hymns and we don't have you know hymn books you know and not that this is like the end all be all of anything but there's so much goodness in hymns that we don't um, get anymore and so i really wanted this year to focus on specifically um, teaching my kids hymns and teaching them kind of theology through the hymns and teaching them more about God through these hymns um, and through these people who wrote these hymns. So it's not huge. We don't, again, we don't go into anything very deep, um, but we just sing it and it's just good to just sing the hymns. So that's the first thing that we have in my morning basket. I do have this here. I figured out what to do with it. For those of you who saw my, my huge homeschool haul, you know I, I had like a bazillion like file folder things. Um, I figured out what to do with this one. Um, and this one is specifically from Walmart and it's got pockets in here with tabs. You know, there's pockets on each end and a tab. I don't really, I don't really, I didn't mark the tabs or anything, but I put like our home, our morning basket or symposium schedule on here. And basically this is my schedule. That's fancy, right? <laughs> this is my schedule here that I go off of every day. And then this is our memory work. And this page I got off of the sandbox easing on CC Connected, which is part of Classical Conversations. If you are a part of CC and have not gone onto CC Connected and have not seen the sandbox, guys, this is so good. <laughs> This is so good. So if you are part of CC, I will put a link to a video down below where I kind of go through the sandbox easing a little bit more in detail. And it's basically an electronic magazine that you can just print out whatever it is that you need. I go through it every week and read the articles and print stuff out that I need. I don't have to print all of it. Um, and then I use what I use and I don't use what I don't use. You know, like it's just one of those things. So it's really good. And then I go through and I will put like here's some geography that we used. Here's just, here's some of our Latin memory work. Here's just some random pieces of extra things that we were going to use. Here's some, a worksheet for our history. They cut these out and then they paste them on to our history sentence. And it's just, I have different things like that for the different weeks. Sometimes I do them, sometimes we don't, just depending on the time or if the kids, you know, I realized maybe the kids don't really like this activity that much, then we won't do it anymore, you know? So it's just one of those things. So I can keep all of my little extra sheets in here. Plus this is my kind of reference to, okay, what's next in symposium time? Or can I skip this? Can I go to something else? Because we kind of did this already and blah, blah, blah. So this is kind of my schedule, if you will. <laughs> okay, another thing I have in here are these little flashcards. Okay, so I realized that my child, my children, didn't know their doubles, the addition doubles very well. So I made these just like simple, flashcards on Canva and you guys if you want them I'll I can share them with you just let me know down in the description I don't know I I just couldn't find good flashcards I, I don't know why the ones that I had before they had the answer and I'm like no I don't want the answer on the front because I want to be able to like quiz them or drill them or whatever you know and so we'll just go through this you know we'll say two four six and then they realize oh it's like counting by twos and so they can figure it out in their head a little bit better and so flashcards i have just found that if i want them to remember something quickly um and efficiently then flashcards 
are a way to do it. So I just made these little guys on Canva. The next thing I have are these cards from the Daily Grace Co. And they are the New Testament cards. You have probably seen these before if you have seen any of my um, morning basket videos. Um, but they are the books of the Bible cards. And so they have a, a book of the Bible, a picture, and then they have information of that book of the Bible on the back. So I will read it to them. So I will just have them draw this picture here, write this out, and then um, they're doing that as I'm reading the information in the back. And that's basically how we are learning our books of the Bible. I have a little video that I that we watch on YouTube, but they basically know the song now, so they know their books of the Bible. And now I just I just have them. Okay, what's the next um, what's the next book? And then we we move on from there. I'll link the song. Um, there's a couple of different videos, and I'll link them all down below. <laughs> to which ones um, we have liked and which ones have kind of stuck. So, okay, the next thing that I wanna share with you guys is language. So I have wanted to teach them Spanish for a really long time and um, I am not fluent in Spanish, neither me or my husband are fluent in Spanish, um, but we understand it and we can read it really well. And so it's just one of those things, if we don't speak it in the home, then it's really hard to teach them Spanish. And it's really hard to teach them any language if they are not constantly, constantly using it. And so when Charlotte Mason Simple Spanish reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to um, review their product and share it with you guys, I was like, yeah, yeah, send it to me please because I am looking for something. <laughs> to use with the kids that is simple that's not going to take up a lot of time but that is going to be effective a few of my friends on youtube have been using this charlotte mason simple spanish and um but my friend um ashley over at joyful noise learning has a really good video and really good overview on what exactly this is so i'll leave it down in the description box below so you can go and check that out but basically there's a few different units and I am just using unit one right now, just kind of getting them used to the idea. And there are formal lessons and informal lessons. And right now we're just doing informal activities. And they have, this is what I love you guys, they have um, an outline. Now I go by days, because not by days of the week, but by like day one, day two, day three, because we have community day on Wednesday. And then so our technically our, our day one is Thursday. You don't need to know that. That's not important to this, but <laughs> but so that's what those are. They're just uh, my own little scribble scrabble in there. Um, but they go and they tell you, okay, on day one or for, or Monday, you're gonna listen to your Bible verse. You're gonna learn your challenge for the week. In this case, it was Buenos Dias for us, so we are using it. So you learn it here, but then you use it all of the rest of the week. Um, and then you listen to your song. And for us, this, for this first unit was Itsy Bitsy Spider, but in Spanish. And my kids have loved it, you guys. And then you go through and you learn all of the different words. So good. So they have week one activity and week two activities. And then the idea is to go on to the next unit. I just haven't done that yet because I feel like there's still a lot more to learn in this unit. And so I've, we've been just taking it so slow and just saying buenos dias every day, learning all of the different words and then using them throughout the day because I can use them because I speak a little bit of Spanish, but um, I just love that. I love that they're actually starting to learn it and it's been so great. So something else that comes with Simple Spanish is are these little printouts. So I printed it out and laminated it and so it's, this is just an example. So this is one of the things that you would do. It tells you, you know, when to do it on that little weekly schedule. And then on the back, you're reading this to the kids and so you'd be reading this. So, la copa del árbol es verde, and the crown of the tree is green, the trunk and the branches and the roots are um, brown, el tronco, las ramas y las raíces son cafés. Don't judge me on my Spanish, guys. I know I probably have an accent, so please don't judge me. But, <laughs> but it's so neat to be able to teach that to my kids. Now, if you can't speak a lick of Spanish, 
um, but you want to learn Spanish, but you're not, you're like, I don't even know how to pronounce some of these words. She does have QR codes here where you just scan it with your phone and it will, it's a recording that will say it for you so you can learn how to say it and all of your kids can learn how to say it by listening to um, a native speaker. So that's really good. I should probably actually do that to see if I'm saying any of these things right. <laughs> Another thing that comes with it, it comes with all of these and they're like, so this is our challenge. And again, it's got a QR code and it says buenos dias and you just hold it up, buenos dias, buenos dias. But the idea is that you're using it throughout the day also. This next one is a leaf. And this is our series. So I'm teaching them to say, pick up the leaf, see the leaf, throw the leaf. Um, in Spanish, obviously. Again, it's got the QR code in case you cannot say that or you can't, can't read it, you can hear it. Um, and it's neat because it's showing them, it's not only teaching them this means leaf, but it's showing them how to say these sentences, which is always the problem. The problem is that you can't put sentences together. It's like, yes, that's that's an arbol and that's a um, hoja, but it's like, how do I put sentences together that I am looking at the leaf, you know? So that's, that's what I really love about it. This is our um, Itsy Bitsy Spider song. And see, it's got QR codes here for the music, um, just reading it and then for vocabulary. It's got vocabulary words up top here. So we have learned these vocabulary words. I think maybe these two also and we still need the other three. Um, but I think they're re re they repeat also. So so we might all already know all of them. I don't know. Maybe not, but um, but it's so neat. This is such a cute song, you guys. I can't share it with you guys because it's part of the curriculum, but it's so cute. We really love it. And then the last thing that they have is a poem. And again, QR code if you can't read it on your own. And basically you read the poem. So I read it in English first. They have it in English and then I'll go through and read it in Spanish. And then it has conversational sentences right here which I love. So like, this is a butterfly. Esta es una mariposa. It's gotten to the point where I, I don't have to do the English anymore. I just say it in Spanish and they understand what I'm saying because I have just done it over and over and 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 I'm doing motion, hand motions that make sense in context, if, if that makes sense. Um, so it's really neat and we have been really enjoying it. And thank you so much, Charlotte Mason, Simple Spanish for sending this to me and just letting me, just letting me live with it for a while. I have just really enjoyed it, guys. So if you want a gentle way to teach your child a language because they don't not only have Spanish, but I believe they have Russian. And I think there's another language in there also that they have. So if you're wanting to teach your child in a kind of in a Charlotte Mason, kind of a gentle approach to language, then I would highly recommend this. The next thing that I wanted to show you guys is this we have um, where were the seven wonders of the ancient world? And this is one of our um, CC memory sentences where we learn the seven wonders of the ancient world. And so I was so happy that I found this because we love these what were, who were, where were, who was <laughs> books. And we really, really enjoy them. They're just, they're short chapters and they have lots of pictures. So my seven year old can just read this on her own, but I really love reading these too because they're full of facts and not just facts, but the facts are told in a way that is just enjoyable to read. So I really, really love these books. If you haven't seen these books, go check them out at your library because most libraries will have a good collection of them. They probably won't have all of them, but they have a good collection. So um, I highly recommend these books. The next book I wanted to show you is our Ancient World Echoes book. And I showed this one a little bit in our um, my CC supplement cycle one supplements video i believe that's what it's called um, i will leave it down in the description box below but basically it has classic literature in here um and there's short stories there's three stories um or readings i should say three readings for each week of cycle one we have 24 weeks in each cycle and so we have really enjoyed these you guys it's I love that it's all packaged up together. This is like classical literature all, pl all packaged together for me because I wouldn't know where to find it. Guys, I don't know anything. 
<laughs> I would know where to look for it. So, and I would know what to read. So I love that it's already packaged all together. I love being able to read them classic literature because you know something that's classic literature is our Bible. And so being able to get, to have them have an ear to listen to classical literature and not um, have an ear for only modern literature, because modern literature is really good too, like The Green Ember, you know, we love that kind of literature also. But to be able to have an ear for classic literature, um, then for them to go from like, books like normal everyday books to the bible won't be such a big jump for them and so i really really like that we're reading these another couple of books that i want to share with you guys that we are reading for our spanish um unit study i guess you could say that that's what it, that is um but one of the it's en que trabajan and this one you guys it was recommended by uh, Charlotte Mason Simple Spanish and this one was expensive. <laughs> I don't know if it's out of print or what but this one was a little bit pricey but it looks so good that I was just like you know what it's worth it I can I can do I can I can buy this one <laughs> and I do have money we we have a budget uh, for homeschool supplies so so I went ahead and just bought it and it talks about all of the different animals that work Oh, and it's, it flips out. I didn't even realize that yet. <laughs> it flips out like this. That's so cute. Um, but yes, but this one is only in Spanish. So this one I'm kind of saving until they, they, they know a little bit more, but it's in our morning basket because I do want to read a book, um, a Spanish book to them every week. Um, like today we read, um, Are You My Mother? Um, but it was in English and Spanish. So I was able to read the English version and then, um, you know, right away do the Spanish version on the same page and stuff. And it was, it was so good. And it did take a while, <laughs> but um, I think that helps to just say it in English and then right away say it in Spanish. And then they kind of get the idea, oh yes, it's, this is uh, pajarito means baby bird, you know? And so it was really good. Um, but another one, Spanish one that we have here is Te Amo, I Love You. And this one is, in both English and Spanish. So it's got the English and then it's got the Spanish on top. So I have both of these in here for when we do do Spanish um, cuddle up time, which is our time that we cuddle up on the couch and read a book, um, usually a picture book. But our library also has a lot of good um, Spanish English picture books. So I do get a few from the library also that I, I don't necessarily keep in here because I like to keep my library books separate, you know. Another good read aloud, you guys, <laughs> that we have just started is Little Pilgrim's Progress by Helen Taylor, and this one is specifically illustrated by Joe Supfin, which I think he does the illustrations for the Wing Feather Saga or something like that. Um, I don't know, it says it in here, but these are so good. If you've read the actual Pilgrim's Progress, um, you know how good it is. And um, But Helen Taylor, years ago, I, I don't, I think she's actually, um, she has actually passed away now, but um, she rewrote it for children. So there are a few books out there, but this one specifically is the illustrated version of it. So it's got a few illustrations in the front, but then, let me see if I can flip through. But then in almost every page, it's got wonderful, wonderful little illustrations. Look at this. Whee! That's a little bit scary. <laughs> but it's got wonderful illustrations. So nice. Oh, and just so beautiful. And look, and this is so big. Again, this was not a inexpensive book. I believe it was like $30 or maybe 30 some dollars. Um, but it was so Oh, look at it. This, I feel like this is going to be one that we read over and over and over again because it's not just a book. It is, it explains this, the journey that a person takes in his Christian faith. It explains all of that. 
in such a way that is so easy to understand. It's about, it's, it's this little rabbit. His name is Christian and it goes through and he's trying to get to the celestial city and to the king. And um, it just goes through and it talks about all of the different people who help him get there, or I should say animals <laughs> that help him get there and all of the different characters that help him, that, that try to push him back. And so it just is it's such an amazing, amazing, I was going to say little book, but it's not a little book. <laughs> it's such a great book, you guys. So I, oh, I keep highly recommending everything, but of course I'm going to because um, we're using it. So, um, so yeah, so this is another great one that you guys, I can't even, I can't even, I, we just started that one and I was already like in tears reading it. It's so good. Um, the last book that we have in here is the children's book of virtues. And these are just little poems and stories. And they're just cute little stories. Um, like I said, that one was to Tortoise and the Hare. Um, they have different poems. And they're just really, really teaching your kids, you know, good morals and having good virtues and different things like that. So we do like this one. Um, I don't read this a lot because we already have so much that we want to read, um, but I save that in there for like weeks that we are off of CC that maybe we don't have, um, you know, we don't have to read this. Then I'll read something like that or, you know, over the summer or over Christmas break, or if I just, you know, they're, they're busy coloring their thing and I'm already done reading whatever I was going to read, then I'll just pull that out and I'll read one of the little verses in there. So it's really, really great. And I'm going to show you this thing. We don't always have this in here, but this is actually a big poster. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see all of it, but it is a huge poster that I have in here because we're learning about plant cell cells and animal cells and the, key, the classifications of living things. And we're gonna just be learning a lot about biology this year and earth science. Well, that earth science is not in this one, but and we're gonna learn about cells and different things like that. So I have this in here. This was actually in a book that I got from Costco that is in my um, CC Cycle One Resources something supplements video. <laughs> I don't know why I can never remember the name of that video, but yeah, it's in that video. If you want to go check that out again, I'll leave it linked down in the description box, but this was a, the, that big poster was a pullout from the activity book that it came with. So it was just, it's, it's great. So I pull that sucker out whenever it's a science day and it's like, okay, what have we learned so far? You know? And so it's really great. And the last thing I have in here is a whiteboard. So this whiteboard specifically is from Arteza. They have a pack of two whiteboards and I believe like 24 markers or dry erase markers on that um, there or something like that. I don't even remember how many, but this fits really nicely into my morning basket. As you can see, it fits really nicely in there. So it's kind of a perfect size. Um, and so I use that like we drew a plant cell and I would draw it out for them as we were, as they were drawing it. And so it was, um, so it's really nice to have that in there. Or if I want to, you know, demonstrate anything, if we are doing art, and I want to demonstrate something for them, then I have that there. So it's really good. I've even used it to entertain my toddler for a little bit. She's sitting in her high chair right next to me during symposium time. And sometimes she just wants to get down, but she loves to color and draw. So sometimes I will just give her the whiteboard, give her a dry erase marker and let her go at it. <laughs> So that has been really good um, for us there. So yeah, you guys, that is what is in my morning basket. We do do our um, CC memory work during symposium time, but that I don't really have anything for that. We just use the CC app for that that I have on my phone and we go through and I do our memory work for the week and then I divide it up. So like here on day one, we'll do uh, Latin and math. On day two, we'll do science and English. Day three, we'll do history and timeline. And day four, we'll do geography and art. We only have four days of symposium because we have community day also. And we don't do anything other than community day on community day. <laughs> So we'll go through our week's memory work and if it is Latin day, Latin and math day, then we'll do all of Latin and all of math or at least seven weeks um, back. And right now it's all of it because we're only on week five. So that's basically how we do our memory work and it has been 
wonderful. The kids have been learning so much. I'm just surprised at how much they know already. This is our second time through cycle one, so so they're kind of remembering some of the stuff that we have learned before, so it's been really neat. So all right, you guys. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. I hope you got some ideas for your morning basket. And keep in mind, guys, you don't have to have the same morning basket all year long. Switch it up. Some people do different themes for the different months. I am not organized enough to do that, or at least that doesn't make, not, not that it doesn't make sense in my head, but for some reason, it's like, it's too much for my brain. <laughs> I can't do that because we do have our memory work and stuff like that. So, so I do it um, kind of like when we finish a book, we, we switch it out and when we finish a book, we switch it out and, but we're doing our memory work the whole time and we're doing different hymns and just, you know, just stuff like that. So I kind of mix it up whenever I feel like it needs to be mixed up and that's totally fine too. If you want to do something that's a whole year long, that's completely fine too. Morning basket or symposium time or whatever you want to call it is completely your time to do whatever you want. Serious, whatever, whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you know whenever new videos pop up. Also, let's be friends. Follow me over on Instagram at Dina underscore Pursuing Peace. And thank you so much to Land of Storybooks for sponsoring this video. Go check out Chrissy's video down in the description box. I will leave that. Thank you so much, Chrissy, for doing this collab with me. And I'd also like to thank Charlotte Mason Simple Spanish for um, sharing that unit study with me. It was, It is amazing, continues to be amazing. So thank you so much for that. Gosh, so many people to thank in this video. I love it, I love it. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you are having a blessed day and I will see you next time with another video. Bye.